Good to see you. Welcome in, Travis. Now, how many of you are familiar with the Unexpectables? Yes, I am yes. very familiar. <laughs> I'm aware of them. Did you know that the murder cave is referenced on the Unexpectables channel? I believe it's been brought uh, up a few times. Oh, many times, hasn't it? Uh, season 1 or Season 2? Da Crew. Yes. I know that. Yeah, I, I, yep, I know that one too. So in, clouds. in the second season of Da Crew, which was uh, the Unexpectables uh, 40k uh, playthrough, Da Crew came across another group called Da Murder Clouds led by Mr. Crumpums. And that was, apparently Connor made that as a reference to the murder cave. And Bosco took great fucking joy in killing all of them. Except, I mean, I can't imagine why. Except for Mr. Crumpums himself. He shoved Mr. Crumpums off of a platform into the warp, and the boy ended up in Maelstrom Season 1. Uh, and then Bosco put meme in, uh... Ravenloft. Oh, he put a uh, lot of people in Ravenloft. He put he did his Wilson impression. I was like, damn it, he did it better than I did. How I, can Bosco do Maximilian Thunder Thighs better than Maximilian Thunder Thighs? Because he did Wilson, not not Max. Ah, uh, fair. So, for those that saw. Uh, I, I have a little story for y'all. For those that have seen uh, Ravenloft, you know that one year Caliban showed up. Uh, I believe it was not this past uh, Ravenloft, but the one before that. Caliban showed up and he introduced himself to the party as Victor Caliban. Ah, uh, yes. You, you got both a Grim reference and a Caliban reference in that, and I'm pretty sure it was entirely by accident. No, that's the thing. The bitch made us wait for an entire year before he told Caliban and I the point of it. So, on Lanny's channel, during the Terror at Isla Scorn, Grim introduced himself as Vincent Caliban, or Vincent Grim. He introduced himself as Vincent Vladimir Grimm. Basically playing off of Caliban, making a little subtle hint, hint, nudge, nudge to Caliban in Lanny's game. Apparently Bosco knew about that shit, and he turned the table. So when Caliban introduced himself to the Ravenloft crew, he introduced himself intentionally as Victor Caliban. Oh, uh, fun fact for all of our MNW Warzone crew, uh, the costume that Osman Killick wears whenever he's on Bang or on Zacco's machine uses the exact same color scheme that he's using here. Lovely. I don't really have any fun facts. I just, I just, I just mess around with people's, uh, I don't know, intentions, heartstrings. I just mess with people, I guess. You make people feel things. Mm, I, w I wish I could stop feeling things some days. They're squishy. That's what I'm here for. That's how I, it, you know, like there, there used to be in, in Warcraft, there was the uh, stone to flesh curse that happened. I'm like the reverse of that. I'm here to make sure all the people who whose hearts have turned to stone turn back to flesh again. We need them. We need them to like live a mortal life. In or since we were talking about it earlier, in 3.5, there was one combo that I only ever got to go off once for spells, and that was flesh to stone, stone to sand, and vitrification, which is the act of turning sand into glass. <laughs> oh. That seems very 
Very dangerous to do. Please don't do that. I mean, it is very dangerous to do. However, so in you, that so campaign, you, that was the so only way yeah. to prevent the BBEG from resurrecting. You just turned him into glass? I turned him into stone. I, I then took that stone and broke it into itty bitty little pieces. I then took those itty bitty little pieces, super them, turned them into a sculpture of himself, mailed that sculpture of himself to myself, and then took a hammer to it. So you huh. turned him into a statue, then you turned him into Sandman from Spider-Man, then you turned him into a glass statue, and then shattered it like Demolition Man. Yes. Interesting choices. Yes. So, speaking of our, our grandiose... Uh, show what do you think was the most interesting thing of this year with maelstrom season one and two what did you enjoy the most seeing so far seeing air quote the zord go off <laughs> yes i heard about that i like seeing everybody having everybody being able to have their moments and have their power fantasies and pulling out all the stops in their various respectable final boss fights. Because at the end of season one, we had like, what, nine, ten different boss fights going on all at once? Okay. I somehow managed to avoid all of my boss fights. We won't ask about that. Yeah, because you made a deal with the devil. I mean, that was only for Uth. Hex, I don't know how I feel about that prompt coming up off of dice. <laughs> uh... Do you want to know what it's about? Oh, do tell. This is back during the clown arc in season one. I would actually roll to see if uh, somebody uh, contracted clownanthropy. Perfect. So anytime that I started rolling dice when somebody was in a match, they were in danger. Oh no. Yeah, Dorvish Doorbreaker. Maybe. Maybe they're magically enchanted. Maybe they're magically delicious. You got a bowl of lucky charms today. Oh, hey, another one of these locks. That's great. Yeah, I gotta do, I gotta oh, go and that, uh, set up my roll. I gotta go and see if I can get some goodies that sounds a very bit something like something that we've seen in Timoroth already mm. or something that was on the way to Timoroth yep and please don't feed the vampiric locks how is Timoroth at the moment um uh, I I think we're just waiting on on wand, really. Mm -hmm. Hello, Squindle. Because, uh, I mean, I've been waiting throughout all of Christmas, more or less. I have kind of said, you know, hey, I want to go to visit all the shops, see what they do, and kind of make a list that I would then distribute to everyone. You know, kind of like make an in-character reason for why there's a pinned message to say, hey, this shop does this. Um, but uh, at the moment, just waiting on wand. 